Hey YouTube, it's Nano Tank Reaper here. It's my first YouTube video, my first video that I am making specifically for YouTube. Um, please do like, please do subscribe to the channel. It is a new channel, I only set it up yesterday. Um, I'm not the most confident person behind the camera and I'm definitely not very confident in front of the camera, um, but I will do my best. I do just wanna share the tank. I've, I've been on Instagram for a while now. Um, do drop me a follow. I will put the uh, link in the description, but it is nano underscore tank underscore reefer. Um, I've been on Instagram for quite some time, probably about 18 months. Um, I originally started the Instagram when I had um, my reefer 170. Um, I set the tank up, um, followed the progress through through Instagram, uh, shut the tank down, uh, and upgraded to the to the reefer 250. Um, I will be doing. Hopefully, I'll be doing weekly videos. Um, as I say, I'm not very confident. These videos, they're not going to be the best videos um, on YouTube, but they're going to be uh, fact-heavy. Um, it's just They're not going to be edited. It will just be me behind the camera talking to you about the tank. I've got two tanks. I've also got an um, innovative, innovative Marine um, Nuvo 20. Um, so I'll post some videos on that as well. But this one... Today I'll mainly focus on the Reefer 250, uh, the equipment that I'm running, uh, my schedule, um, and, and basically what's going on. Um, as I say, these will be weekly videos. I don't unfortunately have the time to do any more videos than probably one a week. It, it should hopefully be one a week, but it might be one every two weeks or when I can find the time. Obviously I do work, even with the situation with it, with it is as in the UK, um, I am still working. I'm not working from home. I am. Um, still working, so unfortunately I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the time. Everyone else is furloughed and, and, and got all the time in the world, but I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones that, that can still work. Um, so, so yeah, that is that. So I'll, I'll update as much as I can, um, but in the meantime, obviously, I do post daily on my, my Instagram, um, and I think it is pretty much daily. If not, I post two times a day. Um, so I'm regularly updating that so if you want to just pop over keep up to date in the week and then i'll just do a big roundup at the end of the week as to, to what's going on any changes any upgrades uh, and yeah as i say i'm not very confident behind the camera hence it is just sat on a tripod um and i'm just talking over it um the content hopefully will get better well if it doesn't get any better i'm probably just going to give up on youtube and stick to my instagram because that's doing all right but hopefully no honestly it, it hopefully will get better I will get more confident as time goes on, um, and um, and yeah, the content will just just keep coming. Um, I've got a lot I want to say about the tank, and I've got a lot of want, that I want to say about the whole system and the, the the way I do things. If there's anything specifically that you would like to see in videos, um, just drop me um, a message in the comments. Uh, pop over to my Instagram, drop me a message there. I'm pretty hot on on um, responding to messages and comments over on my Instagram. Um, so yeah, there's a number of ways you can get hold of me. Um, so yeah, so let's let's go through the tank. The tank itself, it's a Red Sea Reefer 250. It's um, been running about nine months now. It's a mixed reef system, uh, running hybrid lights. Um, I started the tank in July. Well, I bought the tank in July. It started pretty much uh, August. Um, I've had my ups and downs with the tanks. I've lost corals, I've lost fish, but I'll do specific videos on on that at a later date. Um, so yeah, I started the tank in July 2019. Uh, bought the tank, started the scape um, whilst I waited for the tank to be delivered. Um, I just made a, a cardboard template of the tank itself. Um, bought some dry rock and, um, and got a bit creative. I'm, I'm really happy with the scape. I like the way it works. The good thing about planning things on paper before is you, you get to work out where you can put things um, like power heads and, and um, wave makers and, and pumps and, and stuff like that. So I, I sort of planned it. It's it's actually two arches. Um, you can't really tell now, uh, but if you pop over to, as I keep plugging this, but if you pop over to my Instagram, there's pictures of the original tank with no corals in it when I first set the tank up. Um, so yeah, you can, you can go through the whole process on there and, and what's been going on through my Instagram page. Um, so as I say, I started it in July. Has been running nine months. Um, I transferred some of my corals, well, I transferred all of the corals over from my previous tank, which is the 170. Um, but I was, my biggest problem in this hobby was impatience, and I've paid the price a number of times. 
Um, so when I originally set up the tank, I, I cycled the tank with ATM Colony, uh, with two clownfish, and I put the corals in there far too quick. I mean, the tank wasn't even three weeks old, and I was chucking corals in there. So I did lose, obviously, a lot of my coral stock. Um, the, the only thing that did make it through, I think, to be honest, was only, I'd, I've got some zoas, um, obviously, down here. Um, they made it through. They were just like singles and, and two polyps on a plug uh, that have grown out since then. But the only two corals that really made it are, where are we? This gold torch here and this torch here. Uh, the rest of it has been purchased over the last nine months, nine or ten months, um, getting it to where it is. As I say, it's a mixed reef system. So we've got SPS, LPS, Euphilia, um, some rock flowering enemies dotted around the place, Zoas. Um, yeah, there's, there's a bit of everything in there, really. Um, I like the way it looks, it works well. I think it's due to the prior planning. I'd, I'd, I'd put down on paper exactly what, well, I knew I, want, I knew I wanted a mixed reef system, but I put down on paper where things were gonna go. Like I've got my torch garden over here. I wanted, I definitely planned that. I wanted SPS all at the top, which is, is, is all here. Um, and I wanted my zoa garden here. Um, and it, it sort of progressed from there. So yeah, um, planning, if you're planning a new reef tank, um, definitely plan what you want in the tank before you get it. I mean, if you want a, a softy tank, it's a bit easier. If you want a mixed reef system, that's when you sort of got to think, right, how am I going to plan this scape um, to, to work? And I mean, this, this torch over here is, is a pain. He just stings everything in, in, in close proximity, so I can't keep it close to anything else. Hence, I've got all my torches over to that side. So yeah, planning stuff out does, does make a massive difference um, for the, for the long-term success of the tank. Um, so, as I said, the, this, this first video that I'm going to do is going to be a brief overview. I say brief, we're already seven minutes in. Um, so it's probably going to be a long overview of exactly what's running in the tank. As I say, I will do separate videos on fish, corals, my dosing system, um, what I dose, my, my maintenance. Um, yeah, I'll do separate videos on that weekly. Um, but yeah, today it's just basically what I've got running, how the system goes, and, um, and yeah, so let's crack on with it. So at the top, we've got the lights. Start from the top and work our way down. We've got the lights. It's, um, it is a hybrid system. It's the Aquatic Life T5 Hybrid. I've got two, uh, four T5 bulbs, two AI Primes, and a Hydro 26. Uh, the T5 bulbs that I'm using are ATI uh, bulbs two blue plus and two actinic bulbs. They come on in the morning at 10.30 a.m. and they close, shut off at, um, at 5.30 p.m. The main reason be behind that is obviously I work through the day and the, the T5s have got a lot of light spill. And if I kept them on later, I mean, especially in the winter, it's, it's coming into it was spring, nearly coming into summer now. Um, so in the winter, it gets dark early. If I keep them on at like seven o'clock at night, and I finish work, come home, and I try to watch the TV. The T5s have got massive lights built, and it's almost impossible to, to enjoy a, a film or, or something when, while they're on. So I run them while I'm at work. The weekends I can make do, uh, but I run them while I'm at work, and it just makes life that little bit easier. The, the LEDs, uh, the LEDs are on uh, the uh, AI schedule. They occur, it's a custom schedule that I've, I've sort of tweaked over the past um, maybe year. Since, uh, since my 170. I can't actually remember what it started off as, um, but it's gone so far from the original schedule that it's, it's pretty much a, cost, a custom schedule now. Uh, they come on at, I think, 9.30 or maybe nine, and they turn off at about 10. There is a big ramp up time and a big ramp down time. Um, so it ramps up for a good three, four hours, and then peaks, uh, stays peaked uh, until the T5 shut off, and then as soon as the T5 shut off, I've got it set so it starts ramping down until it, it finally um, finally shuts off. I do like to keep it really low at night. Um, I don't run the moonlight settings or anything or any blues at night. It, when it's when it, when they're off, they're off. They you can't see anything in the tank. But between say half eight and, and ten or half ten, I can't remember what time they close off. But but at that point, it's just it's low light. It's low blue light and I like looking at the tank at night under that light. I think it's, I think it's really nice. I like the aesthetics of it. Um, 
so that's that's the lighting system I've got on on the system. I'm really happy with it. I I ran hybrids on my old tank, my 170, uh, before I got this tank. Um, but that tank was short-lived um, only because of space and the corals that I wanted to keep. It, I don't know if anyone's got a 170, but the cube design of it, it's a great tank, but you can not you can keep specific corals in there, but you can't really put a vast range of corals in there, mainly due to flow issues and compatibility. I mean, keeping a torch next to SPS is impossible because you know what they're like. I mean, it's, it's just impossible. So um, that's why I upgraded. I ran out of space um, and flow was a big issue as well. Um, we'll move on to flow. Um, flow, what we run in here, we've got um, two JBOs on the back. We've got one here, uh, one here. That is the SW4 and that is the SW8. They actually came from my 170. Uh, when I first set up this tank, I didn't buy all of the equipment uh, and, uh, at the get-go. It was a tank that was going to progress through through the stages. Um, so I started off with those two those two pumps. I had them where the gyres are sat now. Um, where are the gyres? They're here and here. Um, so I only upgraded the gyres um, in probably about December. Um, so I was running those JBOs, uh, one left, one right, and it wasn't until I started getting into the SPS that I really wanted to um, upgrade the pumps because flow was becoming. It wasn't an issue. Um, but I wanted more flow and more random flow. So then in, um, in December, I decided to, actually, no, it wasn't December, it was, um, I got it on the Black Friday deals. So it must have been about November. Um, I upgraded to the, the max spec dryers. I moved the JBOs to the back, which are pushing water from back to front, and I put the, the max spec dryers on the left. And the right, I mean, the flow pattern that I've got at the minute, I love it, absolutely love it. The corals love it, and I love, I love the way it moves the corals. It's great. The torches really, um, yeah, they, they absolutely love it. So, I've got the SW8 on the left here. Uh, that's running at about 50% just on pulse mode. I'm running the SW4 on 100% because it's only small. I'll probably upgrade that little pump there um, to the same as that one. Um, I'd like MP10s on the tank, but the problem is it's sat so close to the back wall that I can't get the backside in uh, without moving the tank forward, and that is just not really an option with a full tank. I don't want to risk it. That and I'm on a, a first floor apartment, so the floor, I've got it butted up against the wall because I feel like that's the most stable place it can be. If I move it forward, I'd, I'd be risking. I probably wouldn't risk the floor, but I wouldn't want to risk it. I probably wouldn't want to sleep at night. Um, so yeah, I can't get the MP10s that I want, so I'll probably just upgrade this one here to the same as that one there, because um, it is running at 100%, and it, it could do, I could do with a little bit higher. Um, the max spec dryers I am running, uh, the left side I'm running on random mode. I think it's, yeah, that one's on random mode, at about 50%. The one on the right is on pulse mode at about 40%. I had them both on random mode, um, but the problem was facing, I've got one set higher than the other, I don't know, you can, you can just see it, one's about two inches higher than the other, but when they were going random mode, they were colliding in the middle and creating um, like micro bubbles, it's still happening a bit, I'll take you a bit closer to the tank in a minute, um, but it was, it was a lot worse. Since I've changed it to pulse mode on the right side, it's sort of eliminated that issue, um, so I'm really happy with it at the minute. Um, as I say, the scape, the scape is what it is. Um, it's, I, I dry scaped it, I planned it out before. Um, it was all dry rock. Um, sand, I bought dry sand. I, did, I, I wanted to eliminate any pest issues. Um, I have gone through a fair, my fair share of pests in the past and also in this tank, um, but I wanted to eliminate as many pest issues as I could. So I started off with dry sand, dry rock, uh, and a few corals that I had in my 170. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of the top top side of the tank. There are a few modifications with regards to the bottom side. I'll talk about these fans that I've got. I've not mentioned them yet, but I'll talk about these fans uh, once I get into sort of the heating and the cooling of the tank. Um, but yeah, that's the top side. We'll move down to the sump, and I'll show you what we've got in the sump. I do have it on a tripod at the minute, so I'll just take it off the tripod, and I do have the lens on. So what I'll do is I'll take the lens off now. We're not looking at the tank. And um, yeah, so the sump, it's, it's a standard V3 sump. Um, a few modifications, a few modifications that I've done really recently. And when I say that, I mean literally in the last week. Um, the first of the modifications I did actually yesterday 
was the, the gate valve. Uh, the only reason why I switched out the gate valve is I cleaned out the pump um, and the standard gate valve that usually sits here. Um, I cleaned it out yesterday, not yesterday, sorry, last week. And ever since I've done that, the, the level in the weir has been um, all over the place. It's been up and down. Um, so I was speaking to a few reefers and they said, yeah, they had the same issue. Before I cleaned it out, I'd got it pretty stable. Um, but since cleaning it out, it was becoming just annoying. And obviously my partner, my partner works from home at the minute. And the issue with that is when I first cleaned it out, I, I left the gate valve where it was and the tank was gargling because everything's so clean inside. It was all gargling all day and pretty much all of Monday. Last Monday, it was um, you could just hear the water falling and the bubbles forming in the in the clarisine. It was just becoming a nightmare. And then I um, I told her to turn it up and up and up and up, um, and it started coming out the the emergency. And because I've upgraded to, to the clarisine, uh, the emergency goes straight into the into the sump and it's not filtered. So I upgraded that because of those issues. That and the fact that when you fit the clarisine, I don't know if anyone else has done it on the red C three V three, but the original gate valve sits here. And it pushes it it sits okay now but it was pushing this here so it wasn't sitting as flat as it could um, so that was another reason why I upgraded that part um, so that goes into the, the newly installed Clarity it's the Clarity SK 3000 um, it was actually a really easy install I did a video yesterday that was mainly intended for my uh, Instagram but I did upload it to to YouTube as well um, and that was just basically how I did it. Um, unfortunately, it's done now, so I can't give you a full um, build video, uh, which I, I, sh I should have done, um, but I didn't. Um, so, so yeah. But basically, all you do is you remove you remove your filter cup holder and the glass panel, uh, and the rest is um, it pretty much fits in there nicely. And cut the original pipe. If you're using the original downpipe uh, from Red Sea, you cut it a bit shorter so you can so it sits sits nicely in the hole. Uh, but the rest of it was not it was a piece of cake honestly um moving on to the skimmer the skimmer is a nightmare honestly um i on my 170 i i bought this and i moved it over from that tank um i had a bubble bubble magus before and that was a great skimmer i upgraded that because it broke um to the red sea skimmer and to be honest it was unbearable uh, the noise that the Red Sea skimmer was producing was is just a nightmare. So I spoke to the guy uh, at my local fish shop, and he said, "Yeah, look, just bring it back. We'll trade it out. What do you want?" And I went for the for the Nios. The Nios is a great skimmer. It gives me a really good skim. But the problem with it is it just won't stop with the micro bubbles. Um, and honestly, I mean, I've had this skimmer for ten months. I had, as I say, I had it on my last tank and. I can't tune it right. I don't. Know. I it's it could be user error. I mean, but I've tried so hard to get it right. It's just I'm I'm going to switch it out. I don't know what to switch it out to, um, but I will be switching it out at some point. Um, so yeah, that's the skimmer. It is, yeah, it is what it is. Behind the skimmer, we've got the Nios Talk 1.0. It's the dual um, where you can have dual dual media. Um, we've got on the bottom. Rower foss to keep my phosphates down. Um, without that running, my phosphate my phosphates are usually about 0.12 or 0.15 or something like that. Um, so I run it to keep them down. I I only add a, a tablespoon of phosphate remover rower foss to it, and it brings it down to about 0.05 between 0.03 and 0.05, which is where I like to keep it. Um, on the top, I run carbon. A lot of people say don't run carbon all the time but to be honest I run it all the time I've run it ever since I've started the tank I did take it out I did take the carbon out uh, for about a month and all my zoas started sulking and, and things didn't look as happy as soon as I put the, uh, the carbon back in uh, everything perked back up and um, and yeah it's doing great again the return pump I'm using is the TMC I think it's the TMC 8000 um, I run it at about 75% on the, um, the random flow generators. Um, and yeah, the random flow generators are one of the, the cheapest and the best additions I've actually added to this tank. It's such a, a cheap upgrade. I, I wouldn't go without one now, to be honest. The, the standard one singular tube from Red Sea 
it's okay it, it does a job but I found it it was it was just coming out and then pushing all the sand back up here uh, so that became a bit of a an issue uh, the dosing pump I'm using it's a DND dosing pump uh, the P4 Pro um, I will do a separate video on what I am dosing um, but just to give you a quick one I'm doing uh, calcium alkalinity and magnesium all from Red Sea I also dose um, the A, B, C and D trace colours um, I do that three times a week every Monday, Wednesday and Friday I do manually dose those um, but these here are set up on a dosing pump I was dosing nitrates up until about two months ago maybe um, I had a real issue with keeping nitrates up um, I, they would be undetectable if I wasn't dosing nitrates they would be undetectable and it wasn't until I added uh, the five blue green chromis that um, my nitrates actually stayed at a level I think they're sitting at about eight parts per million now uh, without having to dose anything which is great um, so I think that's everything in the cabinet apart from the fact that I've got rid of the uh, the standard ATO container and or well, I had to do that because I upgraded to the Clarity um, but then I've got a 25 litre barrel that 25 litre barrel um, is being fed into the tank uh, down this tube here, which I installed yesterday, um, to the DD, oh, you can you see it, the DD optical sensor, that green sensor there. Um, there. Um, so yeah, I only upgraded that because I, well, I had to, because I had to get rid of the um, the standard container, and the standard container was being, it, it was inconvenient, I mean, I was filling it up every three days, rather than this, I'm hoping to get at least a week out of it, and then I can top that up, when I do my weekly water change, I'll just do the water change, top that up, uh, and that's my weekly maintenance. Um, it's not... I did used to have all of my um, my equipment in here, where this is, where this all sits here. Um, but I decided, let's push forward, um, to just build this, this separate little cabinet here. It's got all my, uh, my, my power, um, there's the return pump, dryers, Wi-Fi dryer, um, the JBO and a temperature controller. Uh, with regards to the temperature controller, I keep the tank at 25, let me just tell you what, I'll pop you back over here. Right, so, I'll put the filter back on. So I keep the tank at 25.5, uh, one or two, I think. Let me just move that. So yeah, I try to keep the tank at about 25.2. You can see the fans I've got here. Let me move it up a little bit. Um, where are we? 